What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the Kraken 580 and the Icon setup video. So most of you guys asked for a separate video on setting up the Icon with the Kraken, so that's what we're doing. But before we get started with the Icon setup, I did say in the last part of the build series that I would explain where I'm putting the satellites. So I'm going to go ahead and figure that out. Figure out what I want to do with them, how I want to route them, and make them look nice and neat, of course, like the rest of the build. And then once I get that done, I'll show you what I did, and then we'll start with the programming. All right, so after probably about two hours of looking at this thing and putting the satellites everywhere. Now, these are the carbon fiber DSMX satellites, so the antennas are very long. And with this model being all carbon fiber, just like the RAW 580, I had the antennas getting out and away. You want your antennas away. So... They usually, they have that little, this little bracket here would go up here if you're running a Neo and you could run the antennas down and out. But the problem with putting that bracket there was the antennas are still too long. Even if I put the satellites down here, it just wouldn't look right. So this is what I did. So if you look here, spin the helicopter around. So what I did is I came out of the icon, looped the satellite wires through, came down in between the two frames here. Then I came down and I put that included bracket, I put it down here and then I ran the antennas out this way. So now it gets the antennas clear away, signal down, facing towards you, completely away from the actual carbon fiber of the helicopter. You can't see anything. And then the wires are satellite mounted on both sides and then ran the antennas up and down. The wires run in between the frame right there, zip tied together, tucked out of the way. The battery still slides in and out, no problem. And now we are done with the satellite placement. We had to cut and shorten the uh, satellite wires two different lengths. So now let's move on to the icon setup. All right, so we went ahead, plugged the icon in, and we opened up the icon software. So now we're on the very first page of the icon setup. So this is just going to be your general instructions and your general page. So what I like to do is go through and name it. So you're going to go through, you're going to select the helicopter and then you're going to continue on. So it's going to be a goblin. We're going to click a 570 because that's, it's a 580 Kraken. And then you're going to go through blade length or blade name you're going to come down here and you're going to find where it says SAB. You're going to select it. And this just basically tells the icon number one what model it is because it helps with gain settings. It helps with all that. It gives you kind of a predetermined file. So we're going to come down here and we're just going to fill out all the information. We're going to come down. We're going to fill out for blades, motor, everything. And for motor, we are running a X Nova. So we're going to find X Nova. For ESC, we are running a, a hobby wing. So we're going to look for a hobby wing. Power supply is going to be internal BEC, so we don't select any of it. For cyclic servos now, this is going to help with the pulse rate, everything in the servo menu. So we are running for cyclic, which is what we have selected cyclic, the Torque CL1208. So we're going to scroll down here until we find Torque servos, and then we're going to click on the CL1208. And that's going to give a pre-done servo uh, frequency on the other menu, which is very nice because then you don't have to look for it. But if they don't have your servo on this menu, so we don't have them here. So they don't have the servos here. Not a big deal, not a problem. We can just go in on the other menu and we can find the servo frequency. And if you can't find them because you're using some kind of an old servo, then you can always look them up online. You can always find what servo uh, frequency. So we don't have them for tail servo or cyclic servo. And transmitter type, we're going to go ahead and select Spectrum because that's what we are flying on. Now we're going to move on to the next step, which is receiver unit orientation. So now on our model, we have it top up wires back. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to select top up wires back, which is going to be this selection here. And that's meaning that the wires are facing the back of the helicopter and there's multiple different selections here depending on how you mount your icon. So now we're going to go here because so now this is going to be different if you're not running Spectrum or you're not running a DSMX satellite. You might be running an SRXL2. You might be running OpenTX, Futaba, whatever. You're going to select what you're doing. So here we're going to select DSMX 11 millisecond 
and then we're gonna select spectrum bind. Now there's two ways to do this. You can bind into software or you can bind like a traditional bind plug. We're gonna bind into software. So now it's gonna come up with this warning. It's gonna say turn off transmitter, cycle power to unit, also disconnect the USB cable that's powering the unit. Now we don't have the uh, helicopter powered up via the flight battery. We are just powering the icon through the USB cable right now. So now it's gonna tell you to receiver must blink, which is talking about the satellite receivers. Turn on the transmitter in your bind and do it this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit okay. We're going to unplug power. We are going to plug power back in via the USB. We are going to grab our radio. We are going to turn on and we are going to bind. So now it'll come up, I see it blinking. Binding, DSMX 22 milliseconds. Now it is binded. Bind complete. That's simple. Now we're gonna go back into the icon software. Now, of course, the name on the on the radio says 470. I would don't worry about any of that. Now we are going to power up the model with the flight pack. It's going to initialize. It's doing all its beeping. And then now nothing will still work. And that's okay. So now this is going to be your main setup this is going to tell you what servo goes to what which we already did all of this it's just a wiring diagram diagram it's going to show you that one in swash plate servo one and so on and so forth and these little swash plates down here are going to show you what servo goes to what but again in the build video if you haven't seen it it will be in the playlist we go over what servo goes to what port on the icon so now we're going to come over to here now this is a very important part of the menu so now you're going to move your sticks to where it says positive and negative 100. Now, of course, this is a pre-done radio file that I've set up for all icons. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to servo setup. You're gonna go to your travel. Now you can see my aileron, elevator, rudders, 131, 131, 132, 133. You're gonna go there, okay? And you are going to adjust your travel until you get a positive 100 and a negative 100 on aileron, elevator, and rudder. So now we know that that is good, we're gonna move on. So now we need to select what swash plate we have and we need to select what rotation our rotor is. So our rotor is a counterclockwise rotation. So we're gonna select counterclockwise. Our, well, I think we have to select this first. So we are going to select our swash plate, which is going to be this one, counter rotation. So we have servo one, two, and three, and that's how we wired the icon, servo one, two, and three. So now we're gonna come over here to the cyclic servo. So now this is going to be, now because we didn't select in the main first part of the menu, we didn't select what servos we had, it's not gonna be pre-lit. Now if you selected what servos you have, it will be pre-lit. So we can go over to servo chart, and this is going to give you everything of your servos, all different makes and models. Now they should have these, they might not. If they don't, we'll have to look them up online and find our pulse and hertz rate, but we'll go through this chart. So now. We have all these guys here, and we can just scroll down, scroll through, and we don't have them on here either. So, not a problem. We're gonna have to look up online and see what the servo frequency and pulse is. All right, so I went ahead and just double checked to make sure, because this is very important. You wanna make sure that your servo pulse and hertz are set properly, because if not, you can burn your servos up. So I went and double checked. So now for cyclic, for the Torque CL 1208s, it's going to be a high-end digital of 15 pulse, 333 hertz. And for the tail, which is the BLS 0704T, is going to be a high-end specific digital of 760. And then now when you click that, everything should work. So you should hear the servos moving. Now all your cyclics should be working like they should. Make sure we have throttle hold on. Cyclic, also make sure that you take off your, or disconnect your main motor and or at least take off your blades. So now we are good here, we can move on to the next menu. So our next menu is going to be our servo swash plate. This is where we are going to be setting up the direction of our servos. If you have everything plugged in correctly, meaning if you have your, if you looked at your swash plate and you followed the diagram, servo one, servo one, servo two, three, so on. All you'll have to do is you'll come here. Now again, this is your swash plate. This is gonna tell you what servos get plugged into what. So now you're gonna go ahead and let's see if we can move this for a minute. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you are going to move 
your sticks. So now you know right here, this is backwards and forward, left and right. Everything is backwards. Nothing's working like it should. That's positive, collective, negative, collective. So what you're going to do is you are going to simply click the servo reverse until everything starts moving the right way. So you're just going to literally keep going through this menu until we have everything working like it should. So now we have our pitch going up and down, but our back forward left and right is still backwards and you're going to keep doing that until it works. So now we have got it working the proper way back forward left right positive negative pitch so now we can move on to the servoing setup or servoing center I'm sorry so we have this cool little guy from SAB it is a swash plate leveler now you don't have to use a swash plate leveler you can do this by setting up your servo length and arms in the manual they'll tell you what everything needs to be so you're going to go ahead and put the servo the collective at mid stick and you can see here that we are off on our right horn merrily our right servo which is servo one servo one is off so we're going to go into servo one and we're going to adjust that down till we see it looks pretty good and then we'll throw the swash plate leveler until we get it there and we'll throw the swash plate leveler on it real quick and we'll check and make sure our swash plate is dead level the other way to look too is at this back servo, which is going to be servo two. We can make sure that that servo is completely level and then use this gauge. So you're gonna use this little gauge that they gave you when you set your servos up. And this little gauge is going to go on the servo like this. Then it just is, you're just gonna hold it onto the servo. And then you are going to set your servo arm with this little piece of carbon. So we are working on servo three. So we need to up that a little bit until that is aligned. And now we know that the servos are where they're supposed to be. The back servo, you just need it to be 90 degrees. And then you're gonna take this little carbon fiber piece and you are going to put it on the other servo and adjust that arm to match your little tab. So now we know all of our servos are good. They're centered, they're where they're supposed to be. So now if you use the caliper and you set all your arms to the book, they should be right there. But as you can see, just by looking at it, our swash plate definitely has a little bit of a tilt in it. It looks like our back arm is a little too high. So that's where this comes into play. So let's get this out and get it on. Okay, so now we got the swash plate leveler out. Now this is a little bit different than any other swash plate le leveler I've ever used. They always go on top of the swash plate, gotta pull the head. But SAB has designed it so that it goes inside of here and it sits down inside of the transmission. Now these three little pins are going to sit down on the three screws that are there. So now with this wash plate leveler, you should have zero pitch everything. This will give you 100% zero at mid stick. So we know that as mid stick, it's too much. So we know right there that we are not at zero pitch and if we look at the head we are a little off of zero so what we need to do is we need to extend our links and we're going to turn them out a couple turns each and see where we're at okay so we went ahead and we extended the links two turns out on each link so now when we go to mid stick we are zeroed out our arms are perfectly level and when we look at our head block our little hash marks are at zero so now we know now that little buzzing is normal anytime you put uh, digital servos and you put a little load on them they're gonna buzz so that's normal so now we are done with this swash plate leveler it was literally that simple we no longer need this guy we can put it away for the next time we are going to need it so now let's go ahead and throw the blades on it and let's get a pitch gauge so we can adjust pitch and cyclic movement okay, so now that we got the blades back on the helicopter and we are technically supposed to be zero at mid stick so we have the transmitter at mid stick and we know that the swash plate is leveled we know that the servo arms are centered where they're supposed to be they're 90 swash plates leveled in 90 technically it is zeroed at mid stick on the head but as you can see we are off by 0 0.7 so we're going to adjust these turn buckles on the blade grip that we are working on we're going to adjust that until we get a true zero at mid stick all right right there 
Okay, so now we are zero at mid stick. So now you're gonna do the same to the other blade and then we're gonna adjust positive and negative pitch. Okay, so now that we know we're right there, zero at mid stick, we did both blades. Now something very important, always make sure that you are pitch gauging with the boom along with the tail boom, the blade along with the tail boom. And now you're gonna do both blades at zero at mid stick. This is not only gonna give you zero pitch at mid stick, but this is also going to get your blades and tracking perfect. You don't have to take off hover in your face. So now we're gonna go positive pitch. We are at 13 and a half degrees and negative pitch. We are at 13, we're right there. I mean, that's, I couldn't ask for a better mechanical setup there. 13.4, 13.5. 13.6 I mean we, we can adjust a little bit you're gonna go into your pitch on the the icon software and we need uh, what do you see we need what point one two perfect 13.8 so let's take a little bit out here okay yeah, a little too much 13.4, click, 13.5. Oh, and it jumped a little bit too much there. So we're gonna stop right there. Now here's a little tip, and I know some people say that it's because of improper linkage setup and so on and so forth. Personally, I have set up countless, countless icons, helicopters over the years and fly wireless units. You will never get a equal positive and negative pitch by adjusting it in the software. So you see, we have 13.6, 13.7 degrees of positive pitch now we go negative pitch and I guarantee you that won't be the same. We're at 13.4. Now the only reasoning is because if you go down here to servo setup, you're gonna go down to where it says pitch and you're going to adjust your pitch by the travel. If you do not do that, you will never get an equal pitch, positive and negative, no matter how many times you go up and down in the icon software. So I always read what the highest number is and then say if your positive says 15 degrees, but your negative says 13 degrees, I would go in and adjust it out, take some positive out. Because if you take the pitch out of it in the icon software, when you go to negative, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a lot less and so on and so forth. So I always have never ever got it to equal pitch on icon. And some people will say because the swash plate's not level or the servo geometry's not right. No, it's not the case. All right, moving on. So now, 13 degrees, 13 degrees. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the tail rotor setup menu. All right, so now we are in the tail rotor setup. So now we are going to do two things. Number one, we are going to look at servo direction. Number two, we are going to see if our servo is centered. And we can tell by looking at it, it is not centered. So first thing, let's go ahead and check rotor, rudder direction. So I like to always, a tip, you can always fold your blade in and move your stick. So I know that's backwards. I gave it left rudder, stick went right. So we're gonna go over to the icon software. We're gonna hit reverse. So now when I give it left, it goes left, right. So now that is correct. So now we can go ahead, straighten this guy back out. Now let's look at our rudder servo. We know right here, that our rudder is not centered. So we're going to go into here and you're gonna to go to this little red, this little plus sign and we're going to hit that until we center that servo. So now we're gonna look at it and that looks centered. Yep, that is centered. So now we know that our rudder servo is centered here we are at the correct direction, and now we are going to look at tail pitch. So now, you guys always hear me talk about tail proper tail setup, and this is what proper tail setup is. So with that servo at 90 degrees, and our rod here looks pretty neutraled, everything looks centered, we have a tiny, tiny bit of right rudder, which is going to be positive pitch. I add two to four degrees to every model. And that always gives me a almost perfect tail. So, way to adjust that is to simply pop this linkage off right here. So you're gonna simply just pop this linkage off 
get yourself a pair of ball link pliers and you are going to note the direction okay so we need to make this rudder push rod shorter by a couple turns so we will we're going to turn this end now you can do this by hand but if you have a little tool it makes life so much easier so we're going to start with one turn in and then we are going to pop loosely back on and we are going to look at our right pitch here that's not enough that's pretty good actually so you're looking at the distance this way you want the tip of this blade to be facing out and I'm pretty happy with that. It's about two degrees. We can go one more. We're going to go one more turn in. So we're going to go back to our little clevis here. We're going to turn it one more turn in. We're going to pop that guy on there. And we're going to see what it looks like. Loosely pop it on. And I am happy with that. Now you'll notice that we have a good bit of right right out this way tip of the blade facing away from the helicopter i am happy with that so i'm going to go ahead and pop that link back on and we can go to setting the limits on both ways now these ball link pliers if you don't have a pair i highly recommend getting a pair they make stuff like this so nice where you can actually get in here and pop this link back on easily any link you need all right so now we're going to look at rudder direction or not rudder direction, limits. We're gonna see how far this travels. So you can tell that's binding, and that's about just there. Now this is important, you don't want anything binding. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the remote one way and use the minus button to take away some of the travel. So we're gonna hold it, and basically we're looking to we got a little gap, so let's go ahead and add one little click here. Let's look at that. And you could go a little bit more, but that's going to be plenty of rudder. And the same thing now with left stick. So now we're gonna look here and see where it binds at. So actually, there is no binding there. So that is perfect. We don't need to adjust that. We have no binding. Everything is free and smooth. So now we're done with rudder setup and we can move on to the next. Now this menu here, so. All right, so now we are going to select if it's a two blade, more than two blade or fly barred. So of course we have a two bladed head and we are going to select 515 to 600 millimeter. That's gonna be the main blade. That's gonna give your, your iconic predetermined gain setting to start with. So now we are in the auto level slash rescue stage. So if you're using Spectrum, and only if you're using Spectrum, this is how to do it, you are gonna go into radio setup. You are going to go into channel assign, and you are gonna go down to channel input configuration. So seven and eight is going to be the two where you're going to assign your rescue and your flight modes. So auxiliary two is B, and that's gonna to go to my flight mode switch back here. And auxiliary three is rescue, which is going to go to this back switch here. Now you can do it on whatever channel Warning, you want. Hold mode. Hold mode. Okay, so now we know it's working by flipping through the flight modes. And if we come down here, we flip rescue and it is active. So now what we need to do is we need to hit click use or use auto level, use rescue. So now we can actually watch the helicopter. Oops, sorry. So we can watch the head. When we flip rescue, we should have positive and then it should slowly go back to what our collective is. So let's say we are at mid stick here, or let's go a little positive. And then we flip rescue, we should get more positive and it should go back to that little bit. Now, if we are in negative mode, we flip rescue, it'll go positive and then go back to where the stick determination is. 
So we know rescue is working and that it's working the right way. Double check and make sure that when you flip rescue on the ground, you have positive pitch. Because if you have your pitch reversed for some reason, you flip rescue, it's going to go negative pitch. So always double, double check. So now we're not going to use auto level or anything for these three flight modes. You can if you want to use your rescue your setup. So now we're going to go over here to governor. So we are going to use the governor and the icon. So we're going to have to spot, we're going to have to select our main gear ratio and then we can go over. So we are going to select our gear ratio. So we're going to go to main gear ratio is going to be, click it here, it's going to give you a main gear teeth count and a motor pinion teeth count. So our main gear teeth count, and it is in the manual, is 207 for the main gear, and we are running a 22 tooth pinion. So we're going to go 227 is what it said, 207. So we're going to go 207. And motor pinion teeth is going to be 22. We're going to hit OK. And that is going to give us our gear ratio. So now we are going to come down here. The telemetry input is going to be from the governor port, which is going to be from your, your uh, Hobbywing ESE. Now we're going to come set a head speed ratio here. So for idle up 2. With this gear ratio that we are running, we want a max head speed of 2,500. That sounds very high. So, especially for David, we're going to set the head speed to 2,200 for head speed 3. And we are going to set 1,850 and 1,650. Okay. So now we have our head speed set. And we have our three different head speeds. So we're running 1650, 1850, and 2200. So governor gain, motors electric. So now we should be able to go over here and it will tell you down here that your throttle curve. So for in your radio, you're going to want to be setting up a flat curve. So go into your throttle curve. Go down to throttle curve. So here it's going to tell you in normal mode, you are going to want a throttle curve of a 45%, 65, and 85. So normal mode, we're going to go zero. We're going to go 45, flat line across. Flat line and flat line. And then we're going to do the same for idle up one we're going to do a 65 is what it recommends 65 so we're just going to go through 65 flat across so now in idle up two you're going to select an 85 flat curve all the way across so for your five point curves is going to be 85 percent so now we can go back into idle up one 65 normal 45 65 85 so now we are good to go here, pull the blades, run it up, and make sure everything is working like it should. Now we're going to come over here to flying style. So now I have it set to this back switch. So now we're going to select, of course, beginner, acro, and 3D. So now our beginner mode for normal mode will be beginner. The helicopter will be very docile. It'll be very smooth and easy and then idle up one will be more of an acrobatic mild 3d soft and then set up three which is idle up two will be more of the hardcore 3d faster servo responses so now that is all you have to do for the setup wizard it is very very simple and easy now of course your last menu here is going to be checking for everything is working properly and what they mean by that is we are going to go ahead and we are going to grab the helicopter and we are going to check. So if we grab the helicopter and we tilt the nose down, swash plate should go back. We tilt the nose up, swash plate should go forward. We tilt the helicopter to the right, the swash or to the left, the swash plate should go to the right. And if we tilt the helicopter to the right, the swash plate should go to the left. So again, nose down, swash plate should go back, nose up, swash plate should go forward, helicopter to the left, swash goes right, helicopter to the right, swash goes left. So now we know our swash plate is working like it should. Let's double check 
the tail. And I'll show you a very easy way to do this. So for the tail rotor, we are going to do the same basic thing here. So we are going to fold a tail blade in. Okay, so if we push the nose of the helicopter to the right, we should be getting left rudder. And if we push the nose of the helicopter to the right or to the left, we should be getting right rudder. So again, nose of the helicopter to the right, we get left rudder. Nose of the helicopter to the left, we get right rudder. So now we know that all of our gyro directions are correct and they are working like they should. So now anything after that is going to be all advanced menus and something that you don't need to get into. So you are completely done with your icon setup. It is really super easy, self-explanatory. Double check, grab your radio now that we are done. And let's make sure that everything is working like it should. So let's put our camera up here. So let's double check. We have negative pitch, we have positive pitch. We have back, we have forward. We have left, we have right. Everything here is working like it should. Back, forward, left, right, positive pitch, negative pitch, mid stick. And again, let's go back to the tail of the helicopter and let's double check. We have left rudder, right rudder. Another way to tell is by the direction of that slider. So if we give it left rudder, the slider should go right. The slider is going to move the opposite direction. So left rudder, slider goes right, right rudder, slider goes left. Basically look at it like the slider is pushing the helicopter. So if I want right rudder, I need the slider to go to the left, which is going to Intel push the helicopter nose to the right and the same with going to the left. So now we know everything is set up properly. We know we are good to go and we are ready for a maiden flight. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something. You enjoyed this video. We are going to save the file on the icon after I get programming and tune flights in because I will go through all of the advanced menus after I fly and just set up what I like and adjust things like servo speed and all of that real quick. If you do not like how fast the helicopter is or if the helicopter is too slow, you can go down to rotation speed. So in forward programming under setup cyclic, you will notice that you have aileron elevator for your three different flight modes and you have your rotation speed down here 160 350 420 now personally i set my idle up three or idle up two uh high head speed i like my rotation speed somewhere around 700 so but for a beginner uh intermediate pilot who doesn't like a sensitive helicopter somebody that likes it to be very slow to respond and not get away from you too quick Everything that is preset here for rotation speed is good, but if until you want something to respond faster, maybe just on aileron, not on elevator, so on and so forth, you go into advanced menus and go into and adjust your rotation speed as you like for cyclic and for tail. Same thing, rotation speed down at the bottom in advanced menus, and you can go through here and this is going to give you all your advanced gains. Now, if you're not very confident with ICOM or you don't know exactly what you're doing, I highly recommend staying out of the advanced menus. But if you are learning or you want to adjust something or something is wrong, say you don't know what's going on. The nice thing about ICON, no matter what, you hold your mouse cursor over it and it will give you a, a very good detailed diagram of what it does so you know your eye gain this parameter sets tail holding power and holding mode a high p gain makes the tail hold or high eye gain makes the tail hold better in position but will result in low frequency tail oscillations and that goes for anything in the icon software that is why i love icon so much they is such a great icon it's such a great fbl platform the, the, the amount of tuning that you can do is incredible so that's why I always recommend everybody that is building a helicopter to go with an Icon fly barless unit. You really, really cannot beat them for the price and the tunability you have for Icon, in my opinion, is, is the best. So, but other than that, we are done. Our helicopter is set up. We are ready to fly. So hopefully the weather's good. I'm going to go get some maiden flights in, get some test flights in. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.
and have a great day.